Every single business owner in the world is going crazy over AI and if you're smart, you will realize that building AI solutions for businesses is the best way to make money online over the next couple of years. And the best part about learning how to build AI solutions and selling them to businesses is that it's a no-brainer for most business owners because most business owners are aware of the potential of AI, they just don't know how to implement. So whether you're a complete beginner or you already have some experience, in today's video, I'm going to show you what I use and how I I build AI chatbots using voice flow. And by the end of this video, you're 100% gonna have learned something new which can benefit you in the long I've run. I've personally built over 100 chatbots over the past eight months and delivered over 50 projects to clients. So when I say that this is the number one skill, I speak from experience. And the crazy part is, even if I was working 24 seven with a big development team, I could not keep up with the demand that we are seeing right now in this space. There's so much opportunity and so many business owners wanna implement this inside of their business. So it's time for you to take action and capitalize on this. Now, the first question is why should you use VoiceFlow? Now, VoiceFlow is a platform that allows you to build AI agents with a flexible platform made for teams. And as you guys can see, it has a super convenient interface to use and you can start building for free. So you can start learning the initial skills for free. The interface is laid out in a way where you can build complex projects in a simple way. So the drag and drop interface is very, very easy to use and it's easy to implement complex solutions through that. Voiceflow has a knowledge base rag feature which allows you to implement data and documents as a knowledge base for the AI where the AI can retrieve information from that knowledge source and implement that into your AI chatbot. It also has a workflow builder which makes it super super easy to connect different elements which I'm going to show you later on in the video. It also has a data management system which allows you to scale agents at scale and manage the data that you input into your AI agents as well as developer tools and APIs such as customer responses, interface functions which is super convenient and regular API calls, which you can use to send information to any third party website in the world. Now, as you can see in this headline right here, the Klarna CEO says that AI can do the job of 700 workers. And that is just one of the signs that you need to jump on the AI way. Now to show you some case studies of businesses that are currently using AI, MasterCard, for example, has seen that 88% of their interviews were scheduled within 24 hours of the request after implementing AI. And another company called Electrolux has seen an 80 84% increase in application conversion rate, a 51% decrease in incomplete applications, a 9% decrease in time to hire, 20% recruitment time saved using one-way interviews, and 78% time saved through AI schedule. Now, if this doesn't show you the power and real-world applications for AI in traditional businesses, then I don't know what will. Now, when you're on voiceflow.com, all you need to do is sign up for an account and then click sign in. This is going to bring you to your voiceflow dashboard where you can see all of your projects in one easy interface. And if you click on the top right, you can create a new assistant. All you're going to have to do here is enter your assistant name, select the modality. So you have chat and voice. And in this case, we're going to use chat as well as the language that you want to use for your project. Now, once you created your project, it's going to open up this interface right here where there's some preloaded stuff. We're just going to go ahead and select all of that and hit delete so that we're going to start out with a fresh canvas. Now, let me walk you through some of the elements that we can use on this canvas, which is going to be important for you to know for later in this video. The first thing under events, you can see that we have intents. Now an intent is something which uses natural language understanding. So it actually has nothing to do with AI specifically. But for example, there are pre-made intents in voice flow, such as yes and no. And you can also create intents. For example, I want a refund could be an intent. And no matter where on the canvas the user is or where in your workflow the user is, if they say I want a refund, it's going to trigger the intent and it's going to jump to that specific state. in your canvas. I personally don't like using intents. So we're going to delete this again. Now let's move on to the AI cards, which includes the response AI and the set AI card. Now the response AI card, and the set AI card are some of the key elements that you need to use when building projects. The response AI card is very simple. You provide a prompt and from there, the AI will generate a response and send it to the user. Now, for example, if I add say hi to the response AI card, and then I go ahead and run a test by clicking run in the top right, it is going to trigger that prompt and send a message to the user. Now the set AI task, on the other hand, is similar to the response AI. However, the response that you generate with your prompt is going to be applied to a variable. So instead of sending it to the user, you can save it in a variable. And this is super useful for analyzing inputs and then redirecting two specific steps in the conversation based on that output. I'm going to show you that later in the video. Now next, we have the talk cards, which is text, image, card, and carousel, which is the static cards. So for example, if you want to add a static text to your chatbot, such as a welcome message, you can do that using the text card. Now with listen, we have a couple different options, such as button, 
choice and capture the one that you're going to be using most frequently is the capture card which basically captures the user reply into a variable called last utterance now this could for example be the very first step in your chat where, for example you would capture a user reply into last utterance and then from there you would use a response ai card to say respond to this message and provide the variable last utterance now if we go ahead and run this right here you can see that i'm going to type in a question so how do i cook pancakes and it is going to capture that user reply into the last utterance and then respond to that message with the instructions for how to cook pancakes the next and this is also a very important section is the logic section where we have conditions then we have a set card which is the same as a set ai card where you save a value into a variable however there's no ai involved so you just re-save values in specific variables you have the random the component and the end i personally very very rarely use a great use case for the condition for example is if you add the condition after a set ai card you can analyze the user's message using the set ai card save that into a variable and then depending on the value inside of that variable which was determined by ai you can reroute the conversation in different directions using a condition now when we move on to the dev section we have functions now functions allow you to create reusable code make api calls transform data and much more complex things this is developer level stuff so if you're not an expert you don't really need this the most popular tool in my opinion which i also use a lot is the api card where you can do get post put delete and patch requests api requests so you can retrieve Retrieve information, you can send information to Zapier, you can send it to your CRM, and more, as well as a JavaScript card, which I also use frequently if you want to reformat data in a variable, for example. Now that is it for the canvas, but now if we go ahead and click on the back arrow in the top left, it will take us to our high level overview. Now, first of all, we have the content section, which includes all of your workflows. You then have the transcripts, where it's going to save all of the conversations that users are having with your chatbot. The analytics section, where you can see all the metrics, which is great for providing reports to clients. We have the integration section, where you have an API key which you can use to integrate for example with many chat to integrate with whatsapp facebook instagram and co you also have the web chat section where you can simply add a code to the body tag of your website and then implement the web chat the classic chatbot that we all know where you click in the bottom right it pops up you then also have the settings where you can set up the assistant name which is just your project level name inside of voice flow image as well as things such as a global no match and global no reply so for example if a user doesn't reply to the chatbot after 100 seconds you can send them a specific message we also have environments where you you have a development and production environment as well as backups so for example and these are also auto generated by voice flow if you want to restore an old version you can do that here also in the bottom left you can see your token usage where you can see how many tokens you've consumed and tokens is how open ai charge for the usage of their llm so basically one token is about four characters and this is how you're going to be charged so if your tokens in voice flow run out if you're on a pay plan you should have enough but once you start to scale and the tokens do run out it's going to stop your projects from working so make sure to buy additional tokens before before that happens but let's go back to the content section right here and in the content section you have number one your workflows which is where we just were which is the canvas where you can build out all of your different workflows and then we also have the knowledge section which is where you can add data sources or knowledge to your ai such as for example plain text you can upload files you can add urls so to a website and pull the information from there you can add sitemap or even integrations such as zendesk so for example if you're building an ai customer support chatbot for a client you're going to be able to do that inside the integration and pull all the help center articles from Zendesk and add that as knowledge to the AI. You also have components, variables, functions, intents, and entities, which are all things that you can use inside of your voice flow chatbot. All right, so now we're back in the canvas and I'm not gonna lie to you, my recording actually got interrupted and part of the recording got wiped out. So I already built out some stuff here. We're gonna walk you through exactly what I did here. So we're combining the usage of the most important blocks, which we discussed earlier, such as the capture cards, the set AI cards, the conditions, the response AI, as well as the response AI with a knowledge base. I'm gonna walk you through all of this now and basically in this case i'm building out a customer support type chat but if you want more specific videos on ai appointment setters or on ai customer support agents we have in-depth tutorials and templates for both of these on the channel so i'm going to pop them up somewhere here on the screen or put them down below in the description so for example we hook up the start card hook it up right here to the text where we say hello how can i help you today then capture the user's reply to this to the last utterance we move on to the set ai card and in this set ai card we added a simple prompt saying the user just reached out to customer support with this message. And we provide the last utterance variable where we just say user's reply. We're gonna ask it to identify which category this message falls into. A refund, the user wants a refund. Shipping, the user wants information on his product ship. Products, the user wants information on available products. And we're gonna specify that the output should be only the word. We're gonna be saving this into the variable intent recognition, which I set up by clicking create new variable here. And then I simply set up the variable this way. We also we open up this dropdown to open up the prompt settings. We can adjust the large language model. In this case, we're using 
using GPD 3.5 Turbo. I would recommend for the highest quality to go with GPD 4. Turbo. We also have the temperature, which determines how deterministic or random the output is. If so you put it to one, it's going to be very random. If you put it to zero, it's going to be very focused on the task. So in this case, since we want to recognize written tense, we're going to set it to 0.05. And the max tokens is how many tokens you can use to generate the completion. And as it says here, one token is approximately four characters in English completion. And then down here, we have the system prompt. So you can think of the system prompt as the overall context, explaining to the AI what it is here to do. So in this case, I kept it very short, but you can make it longer for sure. Uh, your task is to identify in which category support requests fall. And then here we have the specific instructions for this specific step. So we're just going to preview this and add in, I want to refund ASAP as the last utterance variable, which would then be the user's input. And we're going to see if it generates this correctly. And it did the variable preview for refund. And refund is the value that it put in the variable. And this would work for refund shipping products. And you can adjust this as you wish. From here, we move down to a condition where basically we set up the refund the shipping and the products where we said, if the variable intense recognition, which is the variable that we save it into here is refund. And we go down a specific path. If it is products, we go down another path. To add a condition, you just simply click add condition. If the variable, and then you just select intent recognition variable is, for example, refund, then go down this specific path. In this case, I'm going to delete this since we already have our condition set and up. From here, you can just drag and drop. For example, if the user wants a refund, you go up here and you can, for example, use a response AI card to ask additional questions. For example, what you could do is ask them why they want a refund and then add an other set AI card to analyze the reason for why they want a refund and then determine if the refund request is valid or not. And then based on that condition, send them down different paths. You can then, for example, use an API card to send a post request to issue the refund or send a notification into Slack, for example, so that one of the team members can issue a refund for the specific client. You can also ask for all kinds of different information, such as the user's order number. Or then you could use a capture card right here. Where, for example, we can ask for the order number here. But then instead of saving it into last utterance, we're going to create a new variable. Or we're going to save it into, for example, order number. And then this reply right here is going to be saved into the order number variable. Which you can then go ahead and pass through using the API request by adding in, for example, a parameter, or a header, depending on which API request format you want. We have a ton of other tutorial videos also on AI customer support chatbots where this is explained more in detail. With products, for example, they want more information on products. We can go down to this. And this is an important difference. You have the AI model as the data source and you have the knowledge base. Now, the AI model is like when you speak with ChatGPT. It just knows things. With the knowledge base, you can add specific knowledge for your business. So down here, we set it to knowledge base. We added in the question, which is last utterance, which is the user's message. And then we add some instructions. Respond to the message with an answer from your knowledge. Now, there's also some additional things here, which we can set up, which is the not found path. Let's say we don't find an answer inside of the knowledge base. Instead of the AI making stuff up, you can just send it down a not found path and, for example, open up a ticket. And we have the override prompt settings where you can set up the system settings, etc. But in many cases, for this right here, for the knowledge base, you're going to want to set it up project wide so you don't have to write out the system prompt, set this up every time. So you can leave this off and just click on back. And when you go to knowledge and go to the top, there's going to be a wheel right here. You can set up system wide knowledge base settings where you have the system prompt right here, the temperature, which again is how random or deterministic it is, the AI model. As I said, GPT 4 Turbo is my favorite. You can also use Claw. I prefer GPT 3.5 Turbo is the cheapest. Obviously, GPT 4 Turbo is, in my opinion, the best and also the most cost effective at 12x tokens. You can set up the max tokens, which is the max amount of tokens allowed to generate the completion. Mm -hmm. Note that if you set it to very low, it's just going to cut off the answer. So I prefer to keep it high and the chunk limit. So when you add information to your knowledge base, it's going to be stored in chunks of data. And how many chunks you output is going to determine a lot of the quality of the AI. So if you have 10 chunks, it's going to be a lot of information for the AI to process. But if you set it down to like two, so what I like to do is two to four. Usually that's going to be the sweet spot. You just go ahead and save that. As you can see, I've already added in a data source here. But if you go to add data source and click plain text, and for example, add this in. So in this case, I've added in information. What products are the best sellers? The best sellers are the Gucci flip flops. Now we're going to go ahead and test this out right here. We send a message. And if it's about the product, it's going to check the knowledge base. And in this case, we've asked what are the best sellers. So we're going to go ahead and run this and we're going to ask what are the best selling products? And it's going to go through the intent recognition and analyze this. It's going to go to the condition. And as you can see, it jumped down the product route because we analyzed the question. And now we've responded using the knowledge base. Best selling products are the Gucci flip flops. You can also see here and you can turn this on or off. If you click up here, you can see the debug mode. For example, now you would just see the messages. And if you turn on the debug mode, you can see how many tokens you've used. So the set AI task, we're using GPT-4 Turbo, used a total of 1,200 tokens. And the response using GPT-3.5 Turbo, used a total of 190. So this tokens. difference is important to understand. You have the data source, knowledge base AI model, and based on this, you can respond. And you can link this all up in a much more complex way, add much more conditions, and continue building this out. But as I said, we have much more in-depth videos which cover this in a lot more detail. Now, an important thing for you to do before you publish any voiceful projects is to actually
actually click publish. A lot of people forget this, but if you don't click publish, it's not going to be live. The API keys won't work. Won't be able to actually do anything. So when you're testing here, this is the development environment. Now, once you click publish, it's actually public. You can click on back, go down here to the integration. And now you can actually use these API keys to integrate into WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, etc. where we have a ton of tutorials on this channel for that, as well as the web chat. So now this code is going to be working. And if you paste it into the body tag of your website, you will be able to actually use that. Now, the key to building voiceful chatbots is to actually build solutions that businesses need. So whatever niche you feel mm -hmm. most drawn to, I would suggest going with that niche and becoming the best at building out AI solutions for that. Niche. And there's so much potential here that I can't stress it enough. AI is here to stay. And over the next five to 10 years, this is going to be the play which either makes or breaks a business. And you can find this step-by-step -step tutorial, all of our templates, all of our resources, our AI customer support, our AI appointment setter videos, all of those templates in our free school community at school.com slash You can find the link for that down below in the description. If you want custom AI solutions or want to work with us, you can book a free consulting call on our website as a discovery call where we go over your business and see how we can help you. You can find that link down below in the description as well at omnifusion.ai. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.